Hi, I am Stephen, and as you see, I like to fish. It is nearly winter, and the water is clear, but in the summer it's full of weeds and algae. This is how it looks in the summer. I asked my grandpa, who's designed sewage treatment plants all over the world, what causes this, and he told me that rivers and lakes are still used to treat our sewage. Especially the urine in the sewage is not treated in sewage treatment plants. Besides causing the same water pollution as poop, urine is a fertilizer, which, when put on lawns, will grow nice green grass, but when put in water, it will grow weeds and algae. This not only looks bad, but when these weeds and algae die, they rot, and that starts even more problems. It starts to stink. It takes all the oxygen in the w out of the water, and the fish will die. It will create dead zones, and this is already happening all over the world. The most famous dead zone is in the Gulf of Mexico, and is now more than 8,000 square miles large. In 1972, way before I was born, Congress passed the Clean Water Act and promised to make all water swimmable and finish fishable by 1983. The ultimate goal was to eliminate all water pollution by 1985. The EPA w was told to make this happen and start a program whereby all cities and industries dumping their sewage in a river need permits. These permits set treatment standards on how much waste they can still dump in the river. Here, my grandpa told me, the EPA made a very big mistake and used a very important water pollution test incorrect. By doing so, the EPA not only ignored part of the pollution caused by poop, but all the pollution caused by urine. My grandpa further explained to me that we live in a biosphere with plants and animals not only living on land but also in the water and in the air. In this biosphere, all the different forms of life live together, which is called an ecosystem, in which several recycling processes occur. If we look at all these different life forms, it seems very complicated. But actually, it's not that bad, if you keep it simple. It is like the structures you build with Lego blocks, like this railroad car I built with a lot of different shaped blocks. Life mainly has four different blocks, called atoms. When they hook together, they become molecules. Here's the smallest one, the hydrogen atom. A little bit bigger is the oxygen atom which, when hooked up with two hydrogen atoms, becomes a water molecule. Then we have the nitrogen atom, which can hook up with three hydrogen atoms, and the largest of them is the carbon atom, which can hook up to four hydrogen atoms. Since there are trillions of these blocks, they can form millions of different structures called organic molecules. A simple organic molecule is sugar. It only has 6 carbon and 14 hydrogen atoms. Did you shoot off? So now that I can trim it. Much more complex are protein molecules, which make up the cells of our bodies, and who will have hundreds of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. They are very large and have very specific shapes. While molecules can break apart, the atoms in them never do and are used over and over again. The same as you probably do with your Lego blocks. In, this na in nature, this is called an element cycle, and the most famous and simplest one is the carbon cycle. This is a picture of the carbon cycle. Life needs energy, and the basic principle here is also easy to understand. 
if you keep it simple. It takes energy to put these atoms together to make a molecule, and the energy is then captured inside that molecule. So if you break that molecule apart, it will release that energy. The carbon cycle shows how carbon dioxide from the air with the nitrogen and the water in the soil uses the energy of the sun to make organic molecules and plants grow. These plants are either directly used by animals as food or as what happened millions of years ago. They are stored as fossil fuel in, this er in the earth. The energy stored in these molecules can be released by chemical oxidation or by biochemical oxidation. But both processes need oxygen. Releasing energy by burning wood or fossil fuels are an example of chemical oxidation. As the organic matter burns with the oxygen in the air, energy is released. And that, and this is a result of carbon dioxide in the water. The smoke you often see is mostly water vapor. But in the smoke are also other molecules, main, many causing air pollution. When my grandpa was my age, he told me that you could not see the air. That's not the case anymore. Due to air pollution, mainly caused by chemical oxidation of gasoline to drive our cars and coal or natural gas to heat our homes or to make the electricity you know used to look in this video. The organic matter eaten by animals is not only used to release energy. By using biochemical oxidation but it is also used to make new proteins to make or replace the cells of our bodies. The organic matter is called food. And as in this apple, or food I eat at McDonald's. Chewing it makes the food smaller. And in my stomach, it is broken down even more. When it passes through my intestines, my body takes this still very large molecule out of the food and what is left over ends up in my poop.